Hey there, let's talk today about park management and kind of the nuances of dealing with that. In fact, for a lot of people, it is a very frustrating and time-consuming uh, thing that you can run across uh, from time to time, especially with the way that a lot of um, parks are being bought by large conglomerates and being basically cleaned up, turned around, which is not a bad thing. I mean, it's helping the communities, low, uh, more affordable home uh, areas to be better, safer areas. So from time to time, what you're going to run across with management is that they're going to request color changes, or they're going to ask for the cleaning up of, of skirting, or they're going to ask for the cleaning up of porches or yard work, right? Some of those things are more understandable and easier things to deal with and, and be okay with than others. I mean, they're, they're trying to clean up the community for the individual's that are moving into the area. And also they're just trying to justify uh, their increase in, in rent as well. So what ended up happening with this one is that we got this home back. There was a shed sitting there. There's another shed that had been there for a long time. Um, there was a carport, wood carport, that was over essentially this whole area here that they wanted us to take down. It had been there forever. Um... Skirting is a common thing. That's understandable. Um, when paint is having issues, being, you know, having to paint it is understandable. Normally we do touch-ups. A lot of touch-ups, a lot of times we'll completely repaint homes if they absolutely need it. This home needed touch-ups, but they didn't like the color. <laughs> so we, we have to go back through and completely change the color scheme. Now, where sometimes this their 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 stepping uh gets a little rough is when they start requesting things that have been here for a long time to be removed and something redone so essentially what they're asking for on this one is that the fence or the basically the screened in porch is brought back to something that is open and it's just steps um Considering this has been here for probably 20 years, as well as also the one on the back side of the home has been here for about 20 years, that's, that's kind of hard to palette. I mean, because it's already been grandfathered in as far as, like, code requirement is with building code. But in order to play within some of these parks, you got to do what you got to do. For instance, we have to clean up the outside of this. We have no problem doing that. We're just going to clean it up and paint it the same color as we're, we're painting the rest of the home, right? Um, what they're also wanting done is this enclosed porch here to be removed <laughs> and just be a deck. Um, the thing that's awesome with this one is that we already have an awning, so we're just going to bring it back, make it not enclosed, make sure that they can see through and uh, paint that with the rest of the house and hopefully we'll be okay. The thing that stunk is that there was a fence that was in great shape <laughs> all the way across here, back behind the shed in here, basically protecting this home from, you know, basically being seen on the street, as well as also there's a community park here and people coming into the, the backyard of the home from the community standpoint. So, you know, sometimes some of those things end up being a bit rough to basically take. <laughs> but the reality is, is if you're going to be doing a lot of volume with that uh, ownership of that community, it's probably in a lot of cases in your best interest to figure out ways to comply. Sometimes they can, they'll can they be willing to compromise. In other cases, they won't. Um, we're in a situation where we had a feeling that some of those things were going to need to be done just based off of what the trend has been with some other homes in some of the other communities that are owned by the same corporation. And so thankfully, we ended up leaving a uh, enough of a budget that offered an opportunity for that. So um, the reality is, it's their land. Um, if we don't like it, 
we can move our home <laughs> or give them the home back. That's not ideal when you're trying to make money. It's also not ideal to have to do a whole bunch of things on the exterior of the home um, after the fact as well. And so quick thing that I wanted to point out with this video is this. When you're going into the community and you're starting to establish an, a relationship or continue to maintain a relationship with ownership of parks, get a feel for what their mission, their objective of what they're trying to accomplish with that park, uh, as well as their other parks across the board. What kinds of things are they going to require? Vast majority of the time that we find, because so, I've been doing this for 20 years, vast going to find is they want the home in good condition on the exterior. They want it updated if possible, especially if it's an older home. They want to make sure that they can see into the porches easily so it's not a place where people can hide stuff, right? Um, they're also looking to make sure that it's accessible so that they can get into the yard and take a look at it since it is their land and enforce rulings. They also want to make sure that the skirting's in good condition from a freeze standpoint, from a infestation such as like varmint, rodents, uh, basically, uh, uh, cats are a pretty good one getting in under the house as well as also just, you know, like I said, trying to keep heat, um, in that area so that you don't have frozen pipes. It's in your best interest for that as well. Um, most of the time that's what they're looking for. They're looking for the exterior to be safe and habitable. Uh, a lot of areas require four by four, um, porches to be added, steps to be added. Uh, in some other areas, it's different than that. Um, but they're looking for something to be safe entry in, safe entry out, exit out, and that they can easily be able to see into the yard and that the home looks good um, when corporate <laughs> is looking to drive through it. So if you remember some of those key points, you can end up, you know, kind of basically reading between the lines as to what the objective is. Big thing is this, is get it in writing before you buy the home. Now, granted... Can they change after? Yes, it happens. We've had that happen before. Uh, the big thing is, is until you start working with them on a more regular, consistent basis, my recommendation would be to make sure that you are going with the direction of leaving some room in your budget just in case something like that ends up happening and that you have to modify something. So uh, parks can be great to work with in a lot of cases, as long as you guys get in a groove and there's an understanding. Um, a lot of times you're helping them to improve their park where they wouldn't normally be able to do it as quickly. And so we're offering a service. So as long as we can get on the same page with everybody, normally it's a symbiotic relationship that works really, really well. But in some cases, you can have some crazy wild cards hit you after you've already used a good portion of your budget. So Make it a great day. <laughs> Have a good one. And uh, make sure you get it in writing.